Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. Thought I would do a video about long exposure noise reduction. I'm gonna say that wrong two or three times in this video. Uh, the reason I'm doing the video is I watched a couple of videos on other YouTube channels. The first one was by Mark Denny. Great YouTube channel, great photographer, beautiful work. Uh, and he has a great teaching style and he does a lot of great videos, especially for those that are kind of new at photography. And I enjoy like watching his videos just to kind of enjoy the way he teaches. Now, in this particular video right here, uh, right here, here, he talks about settings that he turns off when he gets a new camera. And obviously, the first thing I do when I get a new camera is go through there and change everything all up, turning a lot of things off. And one setting he recommends you turn off is long exposure noise reduction. Now, the reason he recommends you turn it off is because he claims he wants to have control and in this, there's no controls. You don't have any way to set it or turn it or tune it. So he thinks it might do too much. I guess he's nervous that it's doing something he doesn't want it to do. And I don't think he understands how this actually works because it's actually very useful if you understand its purpose. And if your expectations are that it's gonna get rid of all noise, that's not what it's about. Now, the other one I watched was pal to tech also a great YouTube channel. I enjoy his videos. He's He's humorous, he has an energetic presentation style, and I really like his channel because he helps me understand my Fuji camera system, which is new to me, I've only had it for a while, and it's really helped me kind of get through the nuances of the Fuji system. He does a great job talking about the features of the Fuji cameras. But in his video, he does a lot of comparisons of taking images with noise reduction on and off, and as he looks at those in Lightroom or whatever, I think it was Lightroom, he can't see a difference between the two. And here again, I think he's expecting it to remove noise that it's not designed to remove because the noise it's designed to remove is actually pretty specific to just long exposures. And once you understand what that noise is, then maybe your expectations are different and you might find it a useful tool. So just to be clear, I'm not really advocating that you necessarily turn this feature on. In fact, I think leaving it off would be just fine most of the time. What I do think is you should understand exactly what this feature is going to do if you use it because you might find circumstances where you do want to use it. And unfortunately, even Fuji in their description of the book in their manual about reducing modeling, which of course is what Chris was looking for in his video, that's not why this feature was invented and I don't think that's what it's trying to do. Now this feature started a long time ago when most cameras were CCD sensors and CCD was really difficult to control long exposure noise. If you went a minute time, if you went a minute in an exposure, uh, this type of noise would be real prevalent. And I'll show you what this noise looks like in just a minute. With modern CMOS sensors, it's really much more controlled, more difficult to see. In a typical image with a lot of data, uh, fairly busy, you're not going to see it. If you have a fairly subtle image with a lot of, you know, real smooth tones and not a lot of detail, a lot of darker tones or you know, even mid-range tones, uh, you probably will be able to pick this up, but only if you make it really large or you zoom in quite a ways. So in my case, I'm usually printing, you know, 60, 70, 80 inch prints. So it's a little bit of an issue. But if you understand what it looks like, what it's trying to do, you can make a decision on where you might want to use it and you might never turn it on. One other quick item with most modern cameras, this feature won't even activate till you get a fairly long exposure, for example, I rarely take an exposure over five seconds long, and I don't think this feature kicks in on a Fuji camera, at least my GFX, till a, around a 10 second exposure. Based on the tests, uh, using the feature with it and without it at eight seconds, there's no difference, so it's not actually eliminating the noise. Once you get the 15 seconds it is, as you'll see in a minute. So maybe test your camera to see when it kicks in. Fuji doesn't document when it actually kicks in, but I can't see it actually happening uh, it, it's pretty obvious once you get to 15 seconds because you can see it count down on the back of the camera. So even turning it on is a good chance your camera won't even ever use it. Anyway, let's talk about noise a little bit so we understand what that, and let me show you exactly what kind of noise this tool is designed to remove and why you might want to use it, not just turn it off. So in any analog system, which is designed to collect some type of information, be it audio, light, electrical impulses, you can get what's called noise. Now understand that a digital camera is actually an analog device. <laughs> the sensor itself is pure analog. And like most digital devices, it has an analog device to measure whatever it's trying to measure. And it will convert that internally into digital information. 
And a sensor is just like that. It counts the photons that land and it'll just count pure number. And so in that regard, it's pure analog. And then it has an analog, the digital converter on the sensor. So it'll get out a relevant number based on the brightness of each pixel. Now, the challenge with any system like that is other kinds of information can be mistaken for the data that it's trying to collect. So that's typically called signal. And the other information that's been mistaken for signal is called noise. And so a lot of times you'll hear a reference of signal to noise ratio. Same goes with a digital camera. Most of the time we don't see noise because the ratio of good signal to noise is so great that the noise is pretty well drowned out or covered up. This goes with audio systems. Just about anything out there has this uh, type of uh, signal to noise ratio it's dealing with. As we expose the sensor longer, there is more likelihood of noise occurring. Uh, it's electronic sensor, a lot of electrons going on in there, a lot of stuff happening. When you crank up the ISO, that's actually magnifying all those signals. And there could be a lot of times where electronic signals inside the camera are mistaken for light. And you'll see that in your noise, and that's, uh, that's what noise is. And so systems are designed to try to figure out what that noise is and remove it. Now, in most cases, you've got a lot of signal with some noise and you're using a noise reduction algorithm that's trying to find that noise within the signal. And that's what post-processing uh, does when you try to do that. That's what, for example, Lightroom, the sliders, you've got luminance and color noise. You've got tools in Lightroom and tools in Photoshop. You even got tools designed specifically for noise. Now, one of the problems you have is that a long exposure noise happens because as the sensor heats up, parts of that sensor kind of overheat and blow out. And what you end up with is there are a bunch of hot pixels. And those are very unique to this type of exposure. You won't see them in a short exposure, but you will see them. And the longer you have that sensor going, the more heat is and the more likely it is to develop these little hot spots. Now, these hot spots are normally found by most noise reduction systems and post-processing. And that's where I think maybe Mark doesn't understand it because if you look for those, you can maybe find them. Now, the good news is they're pretty rare. They're not, you know, not like they're plastered all over the place. And a lot of times they're also hidden within the signal, but you might find every once in a while, it looks like just a little bright spot. Uh, and it's not a good example as I had a friend quite a while ago that, did some star trails and he called me up and says, I've got these little stars that didn't move. There's, you know, he had four or five of them and he had to look really hard to see them. And he wasn't, he just was curious what they were. And well, they weren't stars. They were uh, long exposure noise. And so they looked like a star that didn't move because that's what it looks like. So long exposure noise reduction works by taking a second exposure right after you finish the first exposure with the shutter closed. This noise typically doesn't change very quickly from exposure to exposure, right? Um, now, it might change over the course of time. It changes based on the, how warm the sensor is to start with. And what long exposure noise reduction does is it takes that second shot, and the only information on that is noise because there's no signal, and it applies a difference calculation to find those little hot spots and eliminate them. Now, you can turn up the luminance and the color uh, noise reduction in Lightroom as far as you want, and it won't eliminate those little hot spots. And like I said, the good news is most of the time it's not going to be a problem. And even if you find a few later, you can clone them out. But the problem is you have to kind of look for them. Um, I've actually had a time where I didn't wasn't able to use it, and... I thought everything was great, and then I printed a large print, and there was this little bright spot right in the middle of the sky that I didn't see. It looked uh, opposite of a dust spot, but I couldn't see it on the screen, and it was so small. And I was able to use the dust spot tool and clone that out, obviously. But if you can use it, it's a really useful setting. So what I want to do now is I've taken a bunch of shots with my lens cap on to kind of show you images taken with it and without it, and you'll see the problem that it's trying to solve. And once you understand how it works, you'll see that there are times you might want to use it. Uh, I leave it on by default because rarely do I not want to use it because I'm rarely doing exposure more than 15 to 30 seconds. If I get into a 30 second or a one minute exposure, I might turn it off because things are happening too quickly and I can't wait a whole nother minute to take a second shot. 
and I'll just have to deal with the noise the best I can and maybe try to find those hot pixels manually. Um, once in a while, I'll actually, after I take a series of five or six, I'll put the lens cap on and take a shot so then I can actually see where they are and I can go back to the images and I can, I can actually use the, the spot brush in Lightroom to spot them out and then apply that to the other settings. So you can actually kind of do this manually if you want to. Anyway, let's take a look at some and maybe it'll help you understand it. So the image on the left is taken without and the image on the right, the setting's been turned on. Here at one second, you'll see there really isn't any difference between the two, maybe even a little more noise in the one on the right taken with the long exposure noise reduction. So that's why I say with a Fuji camera, if we'll take a look, even if we go to four seconds, you'll see there's not much difference. And here I'm going to go to 15 seconds. And now you can see there is some effect. Uh, some of those hot spots are now being eliminated. At eight seconds, I didn't see any change. So somewhere around 10 seconds is kind of the setting that Fuji's decided where it will start applying that feature. Now, cameras before, that was usually a lot earlier than that. If we get into longer than that, here you see we've got a 30-second exposure and not a lot more of the noise in the 30 second exposure than there was in the 15. Let's go to a little longer exposure. And now we're into 60 seconds and you can see there's quite a bit more noise than the one in the left, but it's mostly the bright hot pixels that are being eliminated. And this other noise is coming from other sources and it's just being exacerbated because it's a longer exposure. And I think that's where some people think it, this is to get rid of all this noise. One last comparison here. Let's just go to um, 120 seconds. And here you can see I have a lot of really bright ones in this one, which the long exposure noise reduction has turned off. So it seems to me that maybe 60 to 120 seconds, if you've got the time and can wait between exposures that long, it might be a useful setting. Uh, as I mentioned before, you could also stick a lens cap on and take a shot yourself and then just use the clone brush tool to take a lot of those out. Uh, you will see that there are a lot of them here. Uh, this is only showing me this much of the image. So there's a lot of them to clone out. It would take you a little bit of time. Uh, but you know, if you're gonna take 10 or 12 shots in a row at two minutes a piece, and you don't have time to wait for two minutes between each one, you might wanna shoot it just so you can get rid of at least the most objectionable ones. One last thing we wanna look at is how it compares with ISO. And here we go to uh, ISO 200 and I have a little bit more noise going on and as you can see uh, it is getting rid of quite a bit of those hot pixels. Uh, we go to ISO 400 and you'll see the background noise is getting more common. Uh, that's just your, uh, your ISO noise coming from a different source. Higher the ISO the more of these hot pixels will show up. Uh, but not dramatically so. You go with ISO and you're going to be more worried about all the color noise. But you can see that the setting is actually getting rid of most of these hot pixels. It doesn't get rid of all of them. Let's go one more. Now we're at ISO 1600. And again, you can see it's pretty effective at getting rid of the hot pixels. The good news is this noise you can pull out pretty quick just with the color noise slider in Lightroom. Let's just real quick do that. And we'll just go to our detail setting. And as we crank up our color noise, you can see we can pull a lot of that other noise out and luminous noise. So, so most of that noise we can pull out. And the good news is once we pull that noise out, those hot pixels are gone. As you'll notice here, I pulled it out of those and we got rid of the noise, but the hot pixels are still there. The noise reduction tool in Lightroom will not solve these hot pixel problems, which is the purpose of the long exposure noise reduction. So hopefully that helps you understand long exposure noise reduction so you can make a decision when you want to use it yourself. As I mentioned, in the case of the Fuji cameras, I'm not sure it kicks in until maybe an eight second exposure. I can't find any documentation of when it does. And I, like I said, I usually use it, uh, leave it on by default because normally I'm not in that big of a hurry. A 15 second exposure, waiting for a 15 second exposure is not too big a deal. Uh, but there are times you want to turn it off. I mean, if you're going to take a 10 minute exposure, you probably don't want to wait 10 minutes. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, just uh, drop me a comment down below. Anyway, hey, thanks. See ya.